Okay, just a little introduction to this video. This did not end up being successful like I was hoping it would. I was going to try to extract the studs out of the cylinder heads for the exhaust manifolds and I got most of them out and then the last few that I could not get out just kept breaking and I wound up being unable to get these out. I probably should have tried a welder but I didn't so it is what it is. Just a heads up, this is not a uh, successful attempt at these. Most of them came out, but a few didn't. So anyway, I don't end up finishing all of them, but I thought I'd show you what happened here with the ones I was able to get out. And now for probably the most difficult job on this truck, the exhaust manifolds. All that ticking noise that you heard in earlier clips was from leaking exhaust gases. And this is a really common issue, especially on older, higher mileage trucks that the exhaust manifold studs break or the manifold itself just literally starts to rust away from the head. Now, as you can see here, all the bolts are intact on this side, but you can see here where the manifold is just starting to come apart and break apart around that stud there. So we've got some leaking going on there. Now this side is very accessible. This is one of the nice, thing about the, nice things about the two valve trucks is everything is really easy to get to here. Uh, once you remove that fender liner out of the way, everything is very open. It is not like this with the three valve trucks. Uh, the manifold sits lower or the frame sits higher. One of the two, I think it's a frame sits higher. And this is a much, much more difficult job. You come around to the other side here, I'll show you where an actual broken stud is. I haven't removed anything on this side yet, but you can see right up in there, we have a broken stud. This is what a normal one looks like, and that's one that is broken. And of course our EGR pipe here is a little rusted and rotted out, so we're gonna replace that while we're at it. And I'm not so sure how difficult this is gonna be. It might go smoothly and it might be a real pain, but let's get started and we'll find out. Well, I did start with one of the easiest ones, but Number one of 16 came out just fine. I heated it up with the torch, which makes things tremendously easier. Uh, it's really amazing the difference applying uh, some heat to this uh, makes. It makes a huge difference. And of course, I soaked them in PB Blaster as well. That's why they appear to be wet. They've been soaking for about the past hour now. And that one came off very easily. So let's keep our fingers crossed that the rest of them do the same. Nice and red hot. Okay, that one was a little bit more difficult than the first one. You could hear it kind of squeak in there a little bit, but we still got it off. Well, so far so good. Everything's come off. Nice and glowing. Hey, she's coming loose. All right. Everything's loose. Got some of the old gaskets off. You can look at this stud here. That one looks fairly new, so I wonder if somebody's already done some of the work on this. But anyway, here's the old manifold. There we go. Looks like somebody was doing some welding here to hold these studs in, I guess. Fortunately, I was able to get it out without having to cut off or remove that stud. You can see here where that, where the manifold bolt uh, hole in the manifold here broke. So we had a little leak there, but I mean, the rest of the manifold looks okay. I don't see any cracks or anything. I mean, it's it's definitely showing its age. I wouldn't be surprised if this is original. Not too bad. Got all the nuts off there of the studs, and we've only got one broken one right there. So this is actually going fairly well. The exhaust manifold is loose. The only thing I have to do now is I'm going to cut this EGR pipe off because that nut that threads into the manifold is just seized on there, and I knew that going into this. So I've got a new pipe 
in addition to the new manifold and I got a new EGR valve as well in case that one up there is C's too. Got the differential pressure or the, the pressure sensor for the EGR to determine the flow. Those go bad a lot as well and it was setting a code so I thought why not. And that should take care of our issue. So let's get the torch out again and cut that pipe off. Of course, I accidentally hit the stop button when I was taking a video of this, figures, but anyway, you get the idea. The cutting torch cut through that thin pipe there. Now we can get the manifold out. And there she is. There we go. All right. Yeah, it would not surprise me if these were original manifolds. Okay, now for the studs. Now we just gotta get the old studs out. Hopefully they come out okay because I'm not gonna reuse these, so it would not be a wise decision. <laughs> so I'm gonna extract these and put some new ones in. Once again, this middle one here is just proven to be the easiest one. Yeah. The studs have been hit and miss. As you can see, I got these four front ones out fine. We did have two of them break back here, so we'll probably just use an extractor on those to get them out. But the way I've been able to get most of them out is I've got this pair of vice grips here. And as you can see, the vice grips dig into the threads on the outside. So what I do is I clamp it down, and then you wiggle it a little bit, and the teeth start to dig in. Then you release it, tighten the vice grip up, and then clamp it down again. You keep repeating that and turn it forward and backward because I've had some studs break loose when I was turning them forward. So as you can see with this one here, I've gotten it loose. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the vice grips off here. Then I'm gonna use my little ratchet here. I think the head is still good on the end of the stud. So we're gonna use this little ratchet to Back this the rest of the way off. Okay, never mind. That's also hit and miss as well. Some of the heads are still okay on those. Some of them aren't. In this case, it isn't. So I'm going to use a little bit smaller pair of vice grips and just work it the rest of the way out. And sometimes they tighten up right at the very end, like this one did. And we'll use the vice grips again one more time. There we go. There it is. So, ideally, that's how you want all of them to go, but the reality is not all of them are going to be that great. As you can see, we've got a couple broken here. Got one more that one right there we'll go on the other side where i was working before and show you the progress i made and i've got two broken ones here as well so hopefully we'll just be two and two but fortunately there's plenty of room here to get an angle drill in and drill this out and then use an extractor to pull them out well fingers crossed that that works i know there are other tricks and other tips that you can do to get these out such as welding a nut on there and getting them off that way. I thought about trying that, but my welder is at the RV and my luck was hit and miss with that. So I just decided I've got my extractor and I've got my vice grips and my uh, heat torch here, cutting torch. I'm just gonna use what I have to finish the job. So that is the last of the footage I took of trying to extract these broken studs. I learned a couple lessons. First off, do not heat treat the studs. In other words, if you heat the studs up with a torch and then try to drill them out, that will actually treat them, so to speak, with heat and it will harden the studs and you won't be able to drill them out with an extractor kit. So that was lesson number one learned there. Uh, lesson number two, take the time to go get your welder and just weld some nuts onto them and back them out uh, for the ones that you can't get out. Uh, and lesson number three, maybe even start with the extractor first be try, before you try to heat them with the torch. Anyways, this was kind of a lesson learned for me. 
in the next video we're going to just replace both cylinder heads I got to thinking about it and I thought you know being a 97 it's older and at one point I thought I had smelled coolant or uh, exhaust gases in the coolant reservoir so I'm thinking maybe we had a head gasket or two starting to go out or maybe has already gone out so we're just going to replace the cylinder heads on this and uh, start Rover with brand new exhaust manifold studs and hardware and everything else. Everything will all be sealed up. We'll fix the intake manifold leaks and it'll be good to go. So that video will be next.